are uh, sanding down our second coat of mud and getting ready to put on our third coat, third and final coat before we texture. Uh, how difficult is it doing the corners or maybe like the 90 degree angles? Uh, very. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, sometimes your, your sander hits this area and if it's not totally dry it'll leave a little dent in it like that. And it's just something that we have to come back later and fix. But it, it's, it's more annoying than it is difficult, I suppose. It's just part of doing it. It's, uh, just, Try and knock down all these little boogers like this. And make sure everything looks nice and smooth so that when the, the next uh, layer goes on, it's not going to be leaving streaks and things like that. Hey, get back to work. That's gonna make the uh, roof leak. I think I'm afraid of a little water. <laughs> oh, that's refreshing. Hopefully that's not too stupid. That should be better than it was. So she's looking for a specific consistency. Have I figured out what that consistency is? Not really, but uh, it needed to be a lot uh, water, more watery than it was, and uh, I think this is better. We'll guess, we'll go ask her, and let the expert tell us. Hey, what do you think of this? Well, let's find out. Mm -hmm. You like that? Okay. I think we're ready to go ahead and start, or did you need me to continue sanding up on the corners? You get her a unique uh, working pair right here because you're sanding, she's muddy. That's something that I don't do too often, so. What, doing it at the same time? Yeah. yeah. Well, might be a little less than orthodox to do it this way. The uh, concern would be that the dust would fall into the uh, wet mud, but I think we can mitigate that hazard by working on offset walls. Um, exactly. Uh, it's it's not that big of a deal. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna join her with Buddy. So. Hey. All right. Oh, sorry, that is meant. So ideally, I should be sanding away from the joint, but the problem is it's so close up right here that I don't really know how. Um, Depeche mode is better than the cure. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, well, it's funny when you blow your nose after doing this, it all comes out white, so it's kind of cool. But um, yeah, I got all the, the major little, they're called boogers, they're just little lumps of dried mud on the walls. Uh, it looks like I've taken care of the overwhelming majority of them. So we can go ahead and start doing what she's doing, which is feathering out and making it look as flat as possible. And it just hides all the little um, defects and different elevations of the... Like I look at these things and realize how quickly we're putting these together. And it's like, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> uh, so this is mud. <laughs> My name's Mud. Yeah. We're not trying. We're not trying to get any strikes. So we started off with a six-inch knife. Uh, start with a six-inch knife to cover up the uh, taped seams, and then this, after that dries and it gets sanded, we use an, an eight-inch knife, right? Eight or ten? I don't recall. Ten and then the twelve. Ten-inch knife next, and then that just widens out the uh, uh, amount of mud that's on the walls, and then finally you'll come through with your twelve-inch knife right here. And then when you put that on, you're going to feather it out like this. And basically what you're doing is you're spreading the mud out so it um, widens the, 
how do I want to put this? It widens the mud to the point where you don't see the little hump where the seam and the tape are. So basically you're just creating the illusion of a flat surface. And, and not letting any light through, correct? I mean, yeah, there's no light coming through, there's no air coming through, no water coming through or anything like that. This is purely aesthetic. Uh, it's just for aesthetic purposes, not for structural purposes or keeping out uh, air or wind or light or anything like that. Um, it's, you just have to do it twice, like, you do a normal seam once, this you just have to do twice, because you can't, obviously, you know, hit it like that, but, uh, it's just, I get very obsessive with making it look very smooth, like I'm frosting a cake or something. It's super helpful, this is my own tool I got specifically, because, uh, Using the six inch knives, obviously it's, it's got a flat. They have the, it's like this, it's, it's flat so you can't really scoop anything out of the bucket. But this is specifically for scooping things out of a five gallon bucket. And it's such a great tool, I love it. This is how I learned initially, uh, is to use a tray uh, or a pan like this. And um, I, I have used the hawk and trowel before. I don't think it's very comfortable just because I can't set it down. Uh, that is the advantage of using a pan is I can do something like this. Ready? Yeah. Can't do that with a hawk. <laughs> uh, I just like using this pan because I like to set things down. When you're bringing this up, you don't want to leave any lines, like right here. There's a line, there's a line, right there, there's a line. So you want to try to like get it on like one big swoop so that it stays nice and smooth. You don't want to keep going over and over again, and that's what I'm doing. It's like I'm just trying to... The thing with the windows is because there's this, you can probably see it here, there's metal, right, that we that we put for the window sill to... Yeah, the beads. The, the beads, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so sometimes it leaves like a little lip, and so with the mud, you have to try to like smooth it out. Doing corners. Uh, just making sure that these uh, have plenty of mud that I can drag across. Try across the wall, but I am running out of mud fast. We might need to crack another case. Yeah, that was pretty fast. So you got like yeah, I just just filled it up, didn't I? Still mudding, but I'm just adding some texture to it since it's a windowsill and we've already sanded it and it looks pretty good. There's not really a whole lot else I'm gonna have to do to it, so it may as well get it out of the way. Is it difficult to uh, look at these little spaces right here and make them look good? I'm just trying to fill in like whatever little gaps on the windowsill that are there. Like, I don't know if you can see it, there's one right there. So just kind of, I just push it. It is gone. Okay, but the question is, do you have to push it, push it real good? Pu push it real good. I want to keep that momentum. So I'm just, you know, we're just getting it done. That's it. So then once we do this too, we can go up to the top of the roof and go finish the rafters. Here's a question that I have for I me. Mean, what happens when you lose that momentum? I mean, do you just fall behind? That's got to suck. It does because it's like, at that point, it's like a mental thing. You know, you can choose to get frustrated and you can choose to just not want to do it, which sometimes we have those days, right? And 
that's perfectly normal, but. That's what I do. <laughs> there's a place where things are way too easy and there's a place where things are way too difficult. And that line where those two meet, I call that the zone. And that's where you're just cruising and you're doing great work and things are going great and time is just flying past you. And then there's other times where it's like, this is so boring. I want to be done with this. It's difficult. It's not fun. And it's, there's a mental game in this. Certainly. And I mean, I, I figure, I think most things in life are a mental game. But uh, how do we break up the monotony? I like to go around and mess with people. Like if they're on a ladder, I'll put nails in their boot or something. I'm just kidding. When you're with your platoon or your squad or anything like that, or your section, and the day is just going by really slowly and no one's having a good time and morale is super low, sometimes you just gotta mess with people and make them laugh and that makes the day go by faster. And I find that that is something that you can apply on uh, the civilian world, civilian side as well. And lifting, lifting people up is a, uh, lifting people, the people around you up is important. Yeah, just go mess with them, like, uh, I don't know, undo their, tie their shoes together or something like that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This ultralight joint compound comes in these big square buckets and we toss it in here like so. Slid right in. My name is Bud. What, what happens when yeah. the opposite happens and you lift everyone up and all of a sudden you make people laugh, you get spirits up, you get morale up? Uh, I, I, it seems that it makes the job go by faster, uh, makes the product come out a little bit better on the backside, people learn a lot better, uh, there's less cortisone levels in their blood. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it just seems like uh, people are a lot... If you, if you mess with people and you uh, try to keep their spirits high, nobody's really at each other's throats and everyone's just having a better time doing it, taking it a little bit more seriously, I think. I don't know, that's just my experience in it. It's important. I'd say so.